Hey guys, this is Dieter from Cloud Economics US. Welcome to my channel. You can reach me on Twitter, via email or in the comments below. Today I want to give you a brief history of cloud computing. So let's get started. I have to be honest with you, this overview is not going to be comprehensive and it will be subject to my own understanding of cloud computing. I believe one of the earliest thinkers around cloud computing was John McCarthy. The majority of his work was around artificial intelligence. McCarthy published in 1955 some early works around time sharing and computers. And in a speech in 1961, he suggested the concept of utility computing. And a fun fact, in 1982, he was part of a group of people that came up with the idea of a space fountain. Not super sure if a space fountain can work in practice. In theory, it looks good. The idea of a space fountain is similar to optical levitation, which we have seen, at least in some practical examples, to work sometimes. Unfortunately, McCarthy passed in 2011. Throughout the 1960s and 70s, the concept of time sharing of then very expensive computer systems was fairly common. Only very large businesses, universities or government organizations were able to afford a computer. And most of the time, those computers were maybe not fully utilized. To be honest, the origins of sharing expensive equipment is not a new one. It has existed for hundreds of years. Next, two folks came along, George Favaloro and Sean O'Sullivan. The two worked at Compaq. They were not computer scientists, they were marketing folks. And in November 1996, they published a paper on cloud computing at Compaq. While this paper never really made it very far, it wasn't approved, it wasn't put into action. However, the paper itself had detailed business plans of cloud computing concepts at that time. For example, the two quoted around $4.95 for about a quarter gigabyte of internet storage. So it was pretty advanced for that time period. I think one of the big influencers in cloud computing is Evan Goldberg, this guy. Not many people know about him actually. Goldberg described his idea as Siebel but on the internet to Larry Ellison. Ellison recommended to Goldberg to build a back office system first, something that includes accounting, an ERP backend, that kind of software. Goldberg agreed and Ellison provided the funding for this effort. In 1998, Goldberg founded NetLedger, which later became NetSuite. It is a web-hosted accounting software. Goldberg was really the first to build software as a service. Another important milestone was when Mark Benioff and a few others founded Salesforce in 1999. Here it is important that Mark Benioff and John Goldberg worked at Oracle before, so Goldberg's ideas were known to Benioff. When Salesforce did its initial public offering in 2004, Ellison was one of the investors. And Salesforce was one of the first companies to provide multiple cloud service offerings. Next. I believe one of the important influencers in cloud computing is Eric Schmidt. Schmidt joined Google's board of directors in March 2001 and later became Google's CEO in August 2001. It is also interesting that Google filed its patent for the PageRank algorithm in September 2001. Many people probably don't know about that, but Google search was not very popular in the early phases. Other companies like Yahoo or Alta Vista had curated search results that 
librarians were looking through. So their search results were much more targeted, much more precise than Google's PageRank algorithm. When I joined Google, one of the things that we were told, and it might be an urban legend, is that Eric Schmidt was the first person to tell Larry and Sergey that Google is not just one single page. He had the vision to look at that and say, hey, you know what? You have hundreds of thousands of pages here. Each page is very specific to the search result the user entered and can be used for ad targeting. This shift was really critical for Google's success. So we talked about of a few influential people that were important for cloud computing as an industry. However, we haven't really seen a whole lot of software or capabilities being produced. Next comes Bigtable. Development on Bigtable started in 2004. It was not the only software that enabled software engineers to build solutions in the cloud. There were other components such as the Google file system, the Google front end, chubby logs, and a few others. However, Bigtable was used for web indexing and the famous MapReduce algorithms. Another thing about these software technologies that many people don't know, at Google, they work as components to build higher level systems. So for example, the Spanner database and Google's F1 database are building on top of Bigtable. It's kind of like Lego building blocks. Since 2004, Google built many of these technologies and Bigtable was not really a differentiating factor for Google anymore. So they made it open source in 2015 and in the hopes that it will help the cloud computing industry to thrive, to elevate it. Last not least, I want to talk about Amazon Web Services. On March 19, 2006, Amazon Web Services offered the first cloud computing service, which is Simple Storage Service. It's an object store that can store files in their original format. In the same year, Amazon Web Services made other cloud computing services available, such as the Simple Q Service or SQS, the Elastic Cloud Compute Service or EC2, and SimpleDB. This concludes my brief history of cloud computing. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Thanks again. Bye.